many places near and far. We're about to overnight sail with our two children. We have nearly four year old, actually not nearly. How old are you? Three. And um, nearly one year old by about four days. What? Hello, Mr. Darwin. What's your name? It's Darwin. We've been sailing the high seas for many years now. It's been really fun. It's had its ups and downs, obviously, but recently we welcomed two little children into the world and that's kind of, honestly, opened our eyes again to all the beauty around us. It really has, it's so true. I've found myself like a child again on so many occasions, seeing something from a different perspective, a child's perspective, so that's really nice. But overnight sailing with two of them, I don't know if that's very nice. <laughs> After last week's storm, it's never felt better lifting anchor and setting sail. On our boat, that didn't sink like my nightmares had convinced me it would. I'll link that video to watch later in the comments if you missed it. Anyway, today we're departing Hope Town towards Eleuthera, covering around 108 nautical miles, which means we'll be sailing in the night. And who are you? Ellie. I'm Ellie. <laughs> How's your time on board been so far? Yeah, it's been amazing. I'm happy to be back on board after a week away, so good. And who have we got here? <laughs> hey, I'm David, a Langlois. Try to pronounce it if you're not French. I say langusta. Langusta, <laughs> which is like lobster. Yeah. I'm not a lobster. Usually we would have kind of tidied up before we started filming, but this episode is about all the chaos that goes on. And we're actually going to Eleuthera, which is a place I've always wanted to see. Everyone's seen a tiny part of the island. It's a beautiful island, really green. A lot of people say it's incredible and maybe we, that would be the spot we would end up. Quiet please. Quiet please. Obviously check the weather, but on top of that, I'm checking four separate models, also the localised current storm, so lightning in real time, there's a website that does that, and looking at the tide time, so we need to exit this car at high tide, and then looking at our anchorage, so you kind of need high tide to leave and then high tide when you arrive, and daylight and daylight, and you can't have all of those things, so then I'm just figuring out the best plan that we've got which turns out to be anchoring in open ocean down here. So we're just going to anchor kind of in the middle of nowhere, unprotected, uh, until daylight comes and then we'll, we'll um, sail in, in the pass. So one thing, if you are new here, you won't know is that up until Lenny was, I think, one, we did it all by ourselves. We didn't have any crew, which I don't recommend. We were young and fit and we thought we could do it. There were a lot of sleepless nights. And then we first had Andre on board from Portugal. He was such a good help. It kind of like made us realize how rough we'd been doing it. So now we kind of permanently have crew. We got Ellie and David on board who are amazing. And since we've had David on board specifically, he helps Riley a lot with the boat maintenance and the sailing so that I can help take care of the kids and cooking in the galley. It's just insane to try and do it all. There are many people out here on boats doing it all and some make it, <laughs> some don't. It's really not for everyone. You're tickling. Yeah. <laughs> 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 He's trying not to laugh so hard. It's cracking, it's cracking, it's cracking. Yeah, it's yeah. cracking, it's cracking. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Lenny. But no more. You wanna come see what Dad's doing? motor out of this cut because it is super tight we definitely would not sail through it and then we'll hoist the sails on the other side and be on our way. Ellie just put Darwin to sleep whilst I flew the drone and now we have a big squall we're about to get soaking wet so we're bringing everything inside that could get wet and putting on our wet weather gear. This is exciting. Yeah that's like really strong wind on the head. 
Can you hear the whistle? Yeah. We've just got a squall here. And had we have hoisted the main and the head sail, we would be taking a reef and winding it in right now because there's some strong wind. And even more rain right here. This is like a wall of water. Ow. Well, just to address one negative comment that we've had from people that just want to have a crack at us, it's like, oh, everything must be so tough with kids, with you and your nanny. That is so annoying, which it's intended to be by these trolls. Whoa. That would be fine if we were just going to, if we were anchored and going to the beach every day. Or even then there would be the, a certain occasion, like when we got, when that storm came past the other day, we made an hour long episode about it. It was ages ago now. But I mean, shit just happens on a boat. And the second something does for Elena and I, if we weren't to have help, it's dangerous. It's flat out dangerous. We really don't have a choice but to have crew. Most people normally have crew if they're just sailing. Um, Elena and I have just never really done that. It wasn't until we had kids that we started doing it. So you can all shut up. <laughs> Too far and she went inside there. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Might take a while. Bad mango for the win. Is that the color of your shirt, Lenny? These are the best, especially this one. I don't know how they make it. It's all organic, natural, I guess. No added sugar. Like it is the sweetest dried mango in the world. I just want to be sponsored by mango. You start your video <laughs> sponsored by mango. <laughs> Although I'm extremely disappointed that the fruit of mango itself cannot sponsor us, I'm really pleased to be sharing Noom with you, who comes really close. I've been using Noom for a fair while now, and I feel like with this incredible tool combined with exercise, no matter the location, right now it's gonna be out at sea, I'm doing the best that I can to take care of my body and mind. Now, Noom isn't a dieting app, it's science-based, using proven psychology and cognitive behavioral therapy techniques to help guide us into making sustainable changes. Now, they have great recipes on here, as well as the ability to actually log your meals. So instead of counting calories and adding it up and subtracting, I find hurts my brain just a little bit. Uh, you can actually just type in what you've eaten for that day and Noom does that for you. So if there's a day where I know I'm gonna be sitting down all day editing or whatever it is, I might avoid the red foods, uh, which they actually categorize they categorize foods into colors so I'm gonna avoid things like oil which is fine on a normal day for me but if it's the day I'm sitting down I, I might just try and avoid those red foods the yellow ones you can enjoy in moderation and the green foods eat as much as you want of I also love my coaches there's a group chat they've really provided me with motivation it's nice to be held accountable so if you'd like to learn more about nutrition which is really what weight loss comes down to help with tracking your fitness and water intake and learn how to change bad habits. You can actually click the link in the description below and take a free evaluation. It doesn't take long and it's actually really cool to see what kind of a custom plan Noom comes up with to help you achieve your fitness goals. You can just visit noom.com forward slash SLV. Go and kick some butt. I got it, all good. Here. So if something happened, and a fish bite, this goes up. And then fish on the line and everyone come and But well, the problem is you have to spot when the peg's on. You yeah. don't hear it. Yeah, the best would have to have a little uh, belt. A belt, a belt would belt. be good, yeah. Sail? Yes, Carla? Are we gonna hoist the sail? No, unfortunately not. We would be tacking upwind for an extra 24 hours. I'm not gonna put the kids through that, so we're gonna hammer down and arrive at 1 a.m. anchor kind of in the middle of the ocean. We're just at a very unprotected anchorage in nine meters of water, and then wait for the sunlight, and then go through the devil's backbone. So would you say that's something that's changed since we've had kids? Like, we're more... Oh yeah, I can't sail the way I want to. Not yeah. even close. Everything revo revolves around these little wombats. It's so annoying. <laughs> the normative subtext is everyone understands that I love them, so I can be a little bit mean to them, and, but know. everyone gets it. The funniest thing that the kids do, you reckon? 
I love it how Lenny wees with you. So <laughs> if Riley's like doing a wee in the toilet or like into the ocean, Lenny has to run up and do one too. It's so cute. <laughs> Darwin's funny. He like he goes like that and he like slaps my face and my chest and he thinks it's funny and I try and tell him no but it is really funny and so I guess I've encouraged it a bit so he kind of slaps me and I think that's really cute. Darwin and Lenny together both just do this thing where they back away from each other and they start stomping faster and faster <laughs> until they're both going. <laughs> and growling. And, yeah and growling. Darwin, you give him food and he dances. Oh, yeah. Nearly every time. He and he would, actually he dances to music. I just saw something on Instagram that said you can make tortillas using two ingredients. And one to one and a half cups of water, two cups of oats, blend it, fry it in a pan. I don't believe this. It looks, seems too good to be true. I'm gonna give it a go. I just said this is all I'm gonna eat from now on. Like, how easy is that? Flip it. I already have. No, no, no. Uh, flip it again. I can't do that, you're good at that. No, you can do it. You can do I can't, it. I've never flipped one. I'm just, just gonna splash oh my just God. I'm just gonna splash oil all over myself. Oh, see? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just woke up. I just figured out that Lenny was the exact age that Darwin is right now when we crossed the North Atlantic which was a treacherous bit of the ocean at the wrong time of year. It can be done and we did it but it was rough as heck and Lenny had just learned to walk. He was nearly one. He forgot how to walk on the crossing because it was so rough. The waves were just, you know, the boat was rocking side to side. It was crazy. So for the whole time I was pretty much carrying him around or sitting with him on the floor going through cupboards to entertain him because he loves to pull out the pots and pans. I'm getting like all these memories. It's kind of like deja vu right now with Darwin trying to walk uh, as the boat's rocking around. He's been walking since nine months. He started early, I guess, because Lenny was kind of showing him what to do and he had to keep up with Lenny. <laughs> Darwin does get a little bit frustrated when it is rocky and he's trying to walk around and obviously falling and hitting his head. Like that's not very fun. That's a vicious cloud behind us. I know. It's like now a it's, wave. It's reaching and um, prowling forward. Yeah. It's horrible. We need to see some wildlife. I've seen some flying fish. Have you? Okay. And a wombat. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Wombat. Did you find <laughs> us? Can't we have sorry. some alone time? <laughs> Speaking of alone time, uh, it is really hard to actually get alone time with two kids. Everyone knows Not that. Not lately, bud. <laughs> Not lately. Come on, we've had a great run. We have lately. <laughs> we have. It's that is amazing. true, we have. Real purple patch. I'm doing. Dolan Vega. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wake up Lenny. Oh, he's awake. Too small? Is that too small to eat? Maybe not. Well, it has to be now. Sometimes I'll bring Darwin down here because it's soft, the bed is soft and he can walk around and play with the miscellaneous things up here and not hurt himself. He likes it. Finally doing your poo poo. Darwin absolutely loves our bathroom. Every morning when we wake up, I come in here, you know, put sunscreen on my face, whatever. He's straight away putting things in the toilet. That's what he's just started to do, putting things in the toilet and the ocean. It's so bad. And he also grabs a toilet brush, which is disgusting. I put it on that side when he's in this room. Yeah, we can look, but stay sitting down, all right? 
fears that we have on board with the kids is them going overboard so we always have our eye on them and also burns we try not to let them in this whole area especially when we're cooking uh, but we also have these little holders they keep the pot in place it could still spill over the top that's why these um, pressure cookers are good and today on a day like today the waves aren't very big you don't have to use these I'll put it on anyway just in case because I'm about to boil a huge pot of water with a lid on it. I'm just being super cautious. Help is very far from where we are right now. <laughs> Captain Lenny takes the helm. Where are we going, Lenny boy? We're going to our Louvre. Our Louvre. What about the kids and seasickness? Lenny has gotten seasick, he threw up twice now, yeah. over four years, so he's not quite four yet. Um, and Darwin, I don't think so. But it's very, their level of energy is proportionate to the sea state. As it gets rougher out here, their world gets smaller and smaller and smaller, so they'll, they hang out on a bed and do almost nothing, which is great. I almost prefer it when it's rougher. You know when your shirt gets wet and you don't hang it out quite properly enough and then the next day it stinks? This side doesn't stink but I smelled that sleeve earlier. Oh, it doesn't stink anymore. So you just wear it the next day and eventually <laughs> the smell goes, depending on how pongy it is. There you go, tell your friends. Who eats spaghetti off a plate? We need to answer this definitively. I'm a bowl, Elena's a plate. I can't, I just think that it's completely ridiculous to attempt to eat. It slides off the plate. Then. No, because then you can put lots of pepper on it and I don't know, eat what you want and put it in. I don't know, that you have to dig. You have to dig to the bottom to get the spaghetti. Let me know in the comments below. This is very important stuff. And more on topic, let us know what you do with your kids to entertain them. Are these Mr. Men books? Yeah, Emmy got us to get them. Yeah. They're supposed to be... Um, Mr. Men books, collect them assist all. Assist in cognitive development. Lenny loves these books, so we're always reading him a book. Oh, no. Topsy Turvy <coughs> put them on his hands. <laughs> they don't go, stuff don't go on your hands. Darwin's asleep, Lenny was nearly asleep and then Riley asked me to watch him put the anchor bridle on, just preparing for when we anchor at midnight. He doesn't want to, he just wants someone to be watching him in case he fell overboard, which he won't, but he's just being super careful. So I'm watching him. And you should be laying down going to sleep now, hey? Yeah, but I'm so not sleepy. You're not sleepy. Yeah, because I'm not sleepy. Well, how do you think you can get more sleepy? Should we read another book? We need something I can get to sleep. But You're... nothing is gonna touch on my sleep. Hmm. Can you think of anything that might help? Pillow can make me sleep. The pillow can make you sleep. Why don't you lay on it? What? <laughs> but that would be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So we've just anchored, the devil's backbone is just over there. We've anchored in a completely exposed, unprotected area. There's swell from everywhere coming in. It's not that uncomfortable um, because there's no wind. There's, there's no wind, so we had to motor all day. It's the most motoring I've, I've done in, I don't know, God, God knows how long. It's about half past one and um, it's good I'll be able to have a sleep tonight and then we can sail, the, the wind should fill in tomorrow a little bit hopefully and then we can sail up this channel here which is what I'm really looking forward to doing. There's these crazy squalls that are around the place so there's no wind, lots of hurricane juice, lots of these powerful storms that are just all scattered all along the horizon you can see lightning strikes kind of everywhere no, not everywhere, but enough that I'm concerned, especially considering how exposed we are. So I've got an anchor alarm set and I'll be sleeping with one eye open. You can't sleep with one of your eyes open, can you? Ridiculous. <laughs>